you've been doing commercial professionally as an agent, yeah, as a consultant for so many years. Uh, but now you on the on the credo living, you're yeah. on the development side, mainly focusing on on residential space. Yeah. Um, what are the what are the give us a rundown of the pros and cons of uh, commercial real estate because that's your your real background. So the um, pros are, uh, I think people sort of hit the nail on the head when they talk about having long leases um, and uh, fully repairing and insuring leases. So the tenant is responsible for maintenance and upkeep. You know, when I, when I first started out, it was pretty common for a tenant to take a lease from 10 to 25 years. And that changed, um, changed post-Brexit and uh, over, the, over the years. The leases have got shorter and shorter as sort of tenant as the sort of um, balance of the property market, especially in retail, has fallen in the favour of the tenant. The tenant drives the terms. So the leases have, have, uh, are ultimately getting shorter. But they're still FRI uh, in, in the large part. Um, you still primarily correct, collect rent checks once a quarter. Um, some retailers have tried to move on to a monthly basis and successfully. But... Um, yeah, so effectively, it's long leases. Yeah, you, you, and, until fairly recently, you could gauge what a good covenant was by looking at a company's financial accounts. And so you knew who was going to stay in place for a period of years and pay their rent every quarter. And uh, so that was a genuine you know, passive investment. Yeah, um, especially with the yeah. FRI there. I think that that's, yeah. from a residential point of view, for, uh, like just knowing that you don't have any regular maintenance of like, White goods and this that and the other. Yes. <laughs> no, no changing of boilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the cons. The cons. I think if um, I think if you get it wrong in commercial, I think you can you can really get it wrong. I mean, I remember. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've interesting, I've, I've got uh, I've got a portfolio, but my portfolio is residential. It's not big by any means, but I haven't taken the um, when I was in corporate. I didn't take the. Um, the decision to jump into the commercial investment market for myself. Uh, and re uh, residential, right, if you get a vacancy, you know, you may have some work to do to bring it up to a habitable standard. It's probably not going to be too expensive. But if you drop the rent by 5 or 10%, you're going to get it let within, you know, two to four weeks. And I remember my first job in, um, uh, in the West End, I, I started in 1995, uh, and I left there in 1997, and... Um, we had on our books a shop in, uh, I think it's just on the edge of Knightsbridge to let, uh, and that was in 95. And when I, when I left in 97, it was still available to let. So, um, so in some certain circumstances within commercial, it's not a case of actually just dropping the rent. It's a case of property might just not be lettable. There, might, there may be no market for it. And as a landlord, of course, you then you've got the sort of upkeep and the, you know, any, any mortgage you've got on it, you know, empty rates and such like. Um, and empty rates are usually much higher than your like your average council tax for a similar square footage. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's painful. There's a certain you know you get a, you get a sort of a, a grace period. I think it's three months where you don't pay empty rates, and if your rateable value is below a certain level, then you don't pay empty rates. But you know, by and large, if you are a, a landlord of commercial property, after a period of time, you'll be picking up the rates um, if your tenant goes. So painful. Um, but you know, place. You know, Things like retail, until fairly recently, a location has been a location. So if you buy in a prime pitch, it's not going to change, right? So eventually you'll find a tenant. Um, you know, if you look at offices nowadays, um, all but the very best offices are, are they, well, that's, the state, that's the generalization, but a lot of the offices are struggling to find a tenant. And then you're finding tenants on short-term leases. And then, of course, there's... Um, changes to legislation, the green agenda coming through, obviously, technologies coming through in buildings, um, smart connected buildings. So, you know, you get your vacancy and then you're going to have to upgrade the property in, in the office sector to make it habitable for the next next tenant. And you could be giving away a rent free of six to 12 months, um, which you don't really do in residential, do you? You sort of get your tenant in and then hopefully they pay rent from day one. But yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, um, the there's this whole shift as well because of these office spaces not being used as co-working space. Yeah. Um, or or um, they're 
calling them CMOs now, which is uh, commercial multiple occupancy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you seeing, is that just a trend and a fad or do you think that that's actually going to be uh, the way that we, we work or do you think that's just going to take a small segment of the market but wholesale, we're still going to have pretty much normal office conditions? Yeah. It, 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 again, it's too early to say post the, um, post the sort of COVID you know, move away from London or move away from the big city and hub and spoke model of offices where you'd have one office in the centre of town and then you'd have your spoke offices in the, you know, in the outskirts. I mean, I, I sense a return to, uh, to the office. Um, if I look at my local uh, train station and the, the amount of cars there on the car park, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to park your car now. So it's, it, it is happening. Um, you know, read press reports, people want their staff back four or five days a week three or four days a week. So um, I think over a period of time, um, we'll, my hunch is we'll eventually get back to something quite close to what it was. It's quite interesting because um, you hear the stories about uh, young surveyors now, not, or young office staff, not, not having the mentoring and, and uh, you know, the sort of training and support systems which they, which they did, you know, because they've been living in there and working in their bedrooms and they've missed all that from the office. Um, so it's interesting to see the um, the drive to go back to the office sort of coming from the younger staff as well. Because when I was a young staff, you know, you couldn't wait to get out of the office. 